Welcome to So You Want to Grow. It's uh, just a little bit about me. I'm team lead of the Joomla marketing team. I'm also a member of the Capital Committee team. I write sometimes for Joomla magazine, Joomla community magazine. And ever since Joomla got launched about 10 years ago, I'm quite addicted to it. Um, those are just some personal items on me. Don't worry. But I would like to know something about you as well, because it matters for the rest of the presentation. So, who of you are site builders? Building sites for customers. Okay. Do we have any extension developers over here? Okay. Yeah. Uh, and why are you here? It's general because of Joomla Day UK, of course, and you want to learn something about Joomla. But do you have any specific questions? Because if you tell them now, it might be that we can answer them in the presentation. And otherwise, you can always find me outside, bring coffee or beer. Leave it a bit till tonight. <laughs> And we'll have a chat. I make extensions, but I always, I never package them up. They're only just for me. Yeah. And I upload them and then discover. Okay. How difficult is it to actually wrap extensions up properly to, I was going to say, flog them to the real world, to give them back to the Joomla community? That's well, as far as I know, it's not that hard. Um, however, I'm a site builder myself, I'm not a developer. But I do know how to market your extension afterwards. But uh, I'll get you in touch with some people who actually develop as well. And their extensions are already in, in the Joomla extension directory. So do you can have a talk with them. Physically package it up and so you've got all the files in the correct yeah, file Yeah, with, with the language yeah. file and the extension, the update stuff. That's kind of what I'm here for today. You, yeah. you know it's, it's written in uh, the docs docs.joomla.org it's all written over there there's also some little um, you can go to some websites and there's like um, little automatic builders so you can just type in in the fields your name and, and things like that and it'll build all the files for you okay that's really I don't want to talk about just me <laughs> I bet you're not answering the question <laughs> <laughs> yeah no no, 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 no problem. problem thank you for um, your discovery you can upload it 
I just upload and discover, yeah. But I want some are good and I want them to be shared. Okay. There is some quite interesting things that you pay in the and That's what I'm thinking of, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, it's good, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, if you if you share me the the source or the link to it, I'll add it to my presentation afterwards when I upload it. So. Okay. Awesome. So everybody here knows what extensions are. Okay. Actually, extensions are one of, in my opinion, Joomla superpowers. You have the core where you can build websites, maintain your website, purely on content. However, if you want to add extensions, or if you're adding extensions, you can build whatever you want. Whether it's an eShop, whether it's a query like Brian just showed, whether it's, I don't know, catalog, whatever you, you want. Extensions are, in my opinion, next to multilingual, etc., are the superpower of Joomla. So a few things you have to look for when you look for extensions is the features, the feature set actually. You have to learn each extension that you use. And you can do that by documentation and some other stuff. Support and updates is always important when you choose extensions as well. Tweaks, does the extension fulfill your expectation or do you have to change something? maintenance and security. Am I going to teach you all that in just 40 minutes? No. No. Why not? It's a never-ending story. What I'm going to give you today are just guidelines. And those are my guidelines in my 10-year experience. But it could be you have another point of view. I agree. Don't worry. So, first of all, extensions and features. If you're looking for an extension, you normally have a view of, look, I need those features in my extension. Like for example, if you go for an eShop, you want something with a shipping plugin, you want something with a payment plugin, you want your products to look nice, you want different options to add to your product maybe, and etc. Those things are now, but you have to look further. You have to look into the future. If you have, for example, a catalog, just catalog, no shop, and you want to add in the future, you want to add the possibility that people can buy it. So whether you choose for a pure catalog extension or you go all the way to kind of an eShop extension, but put it in catalog mode. So it's really, it depends on, on what you want, what your customer wants, before you actually can choose an extension. I have never got to an extension where I didn't have to do any tweaks, but I'll come back to that later. Now, the roadmap of each extension is also very important. Is the development ongoing and what will come next in the next releases from that extension? For example, is there a change within, are they using MooTools right now and they're going to use Bootstrap and disband MooTools, for example. Um, other things are, I don't know, you got a lot of possibilities. Um, it's, it's always interesting to read uh, the roadmap as well. I have a little pop quiz over here. Um, it's from a client of mine, actually. So a client wants to cut down the amount of support calls he's getting. Phone calls, of course. He wants a clear overview of all the support questions and wants to set up some place to gather information. He wants to push certain questions to certain people. And he wants it all online and already has a Joomla 2.5 install. So my question to you is what would you recommend or what would you do or how would you look for a extension that fits here. Not all at once. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody an ID? Shoot. Start on the jet. Start on the jet. Yeah. Do you extension directory? Well, I 
first of all, I think we should try to migrate to you, Patrick. Good. Um, <laughs> I think we can even create something very nice using just the article manager and the tax extension to to show all the support questions in one place and make them easily searchable. Okay. And how do you want people to actually pose the questions to the, to my client? Yeah, that is something was not it's not in my scope. But we can try to use a forms component like RS forms or uh, kernel forms okay. to to push that questions and create an article automatically and then if you have the answer can complete the article and publish it as a new question or yeah, depends. Okay. But yeah, a, com a, a contact form with RS form or, or I mean even Jula's contact form will do, I guess, mm -hmm. for basic questions. Yeah. Any other ideas? FIQ. FAQ. You're close. No? Nope. Thank you. <laughs> a help desk. Because this actually all fits in into a help disk. The extension I chose for this one was Magma Help Disk. It has a ticket system, so people can ask their questions to my client. It has a backend where you can track your questions, your answers, and everything. So, overview of all support questions. It has a download zone, it has a documentation zone, and it has a knowledge base gather all information into one place. He wants to push some questions to certain people. It has a workflow where you can set if it's for this department, go to that person. If it's for this department, you can go to that per person. You can add several workflows in it. And of course, first thing was to migrate it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's always you have to really look forward and don't be afraid to ask your client questions like is it just a support ticket system you want or do you want downloads added do you want documentation in it because it's really important because otherwise you'll you'll finish the job and within one or two months he'll come back and maybe the extension you choose at the first time is not fulfilling the next thing he wants so Learn and documentation, dare to ask. Extension developers, please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, don't mind if you have a question about their extension. So if you have a question, you, you come across an extension and you get a question like, does it do this or does it do that? Just ask the developer. There are also people just like us, I hope, <laughs> and so it's pretty easy if you ask them a question and they will answer like yes it's in there no it's not or yeah we can add it or it's on the roadmap so and of course documentation RTFM I'm not going to pronounce it one way last year in, in the Netherlands they had about 10 different meanings of, of RTFM really good but <laughs> you know what I mean. So read the manual, if it's available, of course. So for developers as well, because there are a few developers over here, try to make your manual or your documentation as readable and as good as possible for the people who come to your site and actually want to use your extension. It's really annoying when you got documentation all just in a forum you have to go and look and scroll through the whole forum even with search enabled you can't always find the right extension uh, the right answer uh, the example I always use here is Akiba Akiba backup and admin tools Nicholas his documentation is awesome sometimes it's even too much but <laughs> You can find what you want, it's, it's awesome. Support and updates. 
is support of the extension free or do you have to pay for it? It's also something you have to keep in mind when you choose an extension. It's, and I can be mistaken, but this is what my experience learned me in, in past years. I prefer paid supports or paid extensions because that will keep the developer motivated to actually help you out. If you choose for a free support, it's fine, but you could only search forums for it. You can't have directly one-on-one -on -one support, for example, with the developer. And also, if the extension is free and, he, and he's giving free support, when is he going to do that? Because the developer gets paid during his day job and maybe giving support, free support, is not part of his day job. Also very important, compatible, compatibility actually. Well, nowadays I hope everybody is already all, excuse me. Nowadays I hope everybody is running Joomla 3 sites and the Joomla 2.5 sites are about to migrate to the latest version. If not, please do. Um, extensions for, well, back in the days when I started uh, with this presentation, we had the end of life 1.5 extensions, we had the 2.5 and the 3 coming up. In that matter, compatibility was sometimes a big problem because you could have an extension 1.5 which wasn't compatible with 2.5 and even the switch from 2.5 to 3, it matters sometimes. So you have an extension for 2.5 but that wasn't compatible with 3 always. So, oh, I should actually scratch this from the presentation, but <coughs> it's still in. Does it use the updater? And I mean the Joomla updater. So, if you go to your extensions and manage, you have updates over there. I like extensions that use the update. Why? Because on my staging site, I don't have to upload every time a new extension because then I first have to check on the developer's website whether an update is available, I have to download it, and I have to upload it to my staging. When I have an extension using the updater, just one click on the staging website and, okay, it works, oh, no, it crashes, I have to do something else. So it's pretty easy. Now, I got some developers, over here. Do you give your own support? I actually I work in JVent, so I develop and I do support. Okay. Another? Yeah, Radek, I know you, <laughs> you <laughs> as well. <laughs> so, and from who actually, let's say, in the past month, who actually had the contact support for getting help with the extension he installed. Okay. How did it go? Fine. Very well. Apart from the fact I should have been more organized and contacted them earlier than late on Friday afternoon. That's the first thing that they did. Okay. Did anybody have a bad experience with support? Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, that's that's true. It's, and it's like a multicultural, international environment. Uh, yeah. If you're not so conscious of what's going on, your true. launch date is during the holiday period in another country. Yeah. You might get a war. True. That's one of the. I think it's a minor disadvantage from the worldwide community, but it's true, because we 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 don't have to just take into account our own culture. We are worldwide. We have to take into account all cultures. We have to take into account all holidays worldwide. I found it fascinating, actually. I didn't feel it was a disadvantage. I learned something about American culture. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you if you have a bad experience with support, <laughs> you might turn a little bit like this. But, yeah. <laughs> no, actually, support is great. Um, 
I, I can't remember the count of how many times I contacted support uh, to help me out with, with some extensions. Um, in the meanwhile, I'll, I'll know a lot of people in person, so sometimes I no longer use the official support channel, but <laughs> don't, don't, always use the official support channel. Uh, no, support is great, but not for everyone. Why? Because not everyone knows how to get good support. On the other hand, not all developers know how to give good support. Um, so how to get good support? Be clear. Be clear about the problem you have. Not just say, my extension isn't working. Yeah. Ah, nobody can do anything about that. So be clear, which Joomla version are you using? Did you get any errors during install? Or did you get any errors after an update? Or so be clear and describe the error or the, the, yeah, the issue you have as detailed as possible. So be detailed about it. Be gentle. I mean, we're all people. We're all here, and somehow we're all volunteers to the Joomla community as well. So we're yelling at the developer because his extension, or maybe not his extension, but your fault causing a problem with the extension. Yelling at him, it's not going to work. Problem is, you probably end up at row 500 from the support questions, while you could be at row 10 or Maybe one. So we're all people. We're all trying to make a living. Well, most of us. We're all trying to make a living with Joomla. So keep on speaking terms. Be gentle to each other. Tricks. So sometimes if you choose an extension, it might not fulfill everything you need. Like for example, we're rebuilding a shop somewhere and we're using Hika shop. Nicholas is giving his presentation as well. Um, Hika shop, just as it is, it's a great tool. However, there's one thing I don't like and that's their social share. So they have a social share built in. It's old school, it's, it's not what it should be. So we're going to tweak it. We're going to take an extension somewhere else, a plugin. We're going to rewrite it for Hikashop. So it's very important. If you have to do tweaks, follow the rules. Do not hack the core of the extension itself. Use overwrites. Use, if it's design-wise, use J layouts, whatever you want. Do not hack the core. Also, from Joomla itself, do not hack the core because you will be afterwards. Maintenance. So, how many site builders here do offer their clients a contract for maintaining the site afterwards? And I'm not talking about content, I'm talking about updates, extension updates. Okay, and the rest? <coughs> Something I want to do, but I'm not entirely sure of sort of the best way to offer it to clients and the best way for me to do it as well. Okay. Well, if you want, we can have a talk afterwards. And I'll tell you how I do it, but it, it depends actually. Mm. Um, you get some people who are trying to figure out, okay, I'm, I'm spending so much time on the project, I take 10% of total price and that's my maintenance fee each year. Either people would say like, okay, well, each month I do one hour, so I calculate my price on, on that base. It really depends. Uh, it's also depending whether you use third party extensions or third party um, solutions like my Joomla, for example. If you use that, it's, it's pretty easy to, to maintain, to, to follow up, etc. So maintenance, is it easy? No, it's not always easy. 
If you're just on a Joomla core website without any extensions, it's pretty easy. Just push the update button whenever you see a Twitter uh, message or a Facebook message like, hey, there's a new update for Joomla. You don't have to log in each day into the back end of the website. Um, if you're using third party extensions, it might get a little bit more difficult. Um, and especially when you do tweaks, mm. be sure to make a backup each time. <laughs> you should actually, anyhow. Security. So let me check when is Nicholas speaking. Okay, at a quarter after 11. So after this room, you all go to the my Joomla room because Nicholas is speaking about security of your website. As Brian mentioned as well, with the site um, that got hacked um, in three times, I had a, I had a similar uh, event with one of, of my clients in Belgium. It's, it's a union. They're not always, well, people are not always keen of them. Um, and we had about three attacks on three days time. And actually, same thing. The site didn't get hacked, but it went down because they did the DDoS attack. So, but luckily, I'm in the side ground room, right? Yeah. <laughs> Do I get five minutes left? I have to hurry or? Oh, come on. <laughs> I should apply the same rule. That's my phone now. <laughs> so, no. Um, we had a DDoS attack. Um, I'm hosting with Tigerd. And actually, they did a great job just switching over to another server. It was live again. Nothing. Um, nothing to do with <laughs> so but security it's all in your hands and I mean this literally if you put in an administrator username and password as admin admin <laughs> come on yeah. what do you expect <laughs> or admin secret come on one two three four <laughs> how did you guess <laughs> no it's it all starts with the basics so your own password, the password of your clients as well. If you, I don't know, does anybody have a Yubi key? <laughs> anybody else? No? Okay. Do you, do you know what a Yubi key is? No. Yeah. No. Two-factor two authentication. Uh -huh. You know there's a possibility to activate two-factor authentication in the back end of your Joomla mm -hmm. website? Mm -hmm. Okay. You got either a Yubi key, you got the Google, uh, the yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, thank you. So, activate it, especially with your super user account. Um, but also for your clients, don't give them a password like Mike, and password is Mike with a capital. I know they will complain about it, but give them complicated passwords or activate two-factor authentication and sell them a YubiKey or give them, depending on how good your relationship is with the client. Next to that, always be sure that your Joomla installation is up to date and it's always running the latest version. A couple of, I think one month or maybe two months ago, we had three releases in a really short period from Joomla mm -hmm. and it wasn't all our fault it wasn't Joomla's fault Ex Kitchen. especially sorry it was Kitchen. thank you especially the latest release it was because of a PHP bug but we as Joomla can't say to everybody who uses it like you have to run the latest version of PHP you have to run the latest version of Joomla it depends on the site builders itself. Do they maintain their installations? Do they maintain their own hosting or not? Because if you start a hosting with Joomla, uh, with, with PHP from, let's say, one year, one year and a half ago, 
and you don't ask your host or you don't do it yourself to upgrade your PHP, you're stuck. Because then the bug is still active, unless you have the latest Joomla version out. So security is not only on your Joomla, it's also on your hosting and it has to cover actually everything. I wanted to say one more thing about security, but I forgot. <coughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Never mind. So, yeah, I still have some time left. That's good. This is a question I usually get after my presentation. What is my top five for extensions, etc.? I can give you my top four. On each install I do, it has Akiba admin tools, it has Akiba backup, it has JCE editor, and it has RS forms. Why RS forms? I don't know. I got addicted to them. Hmm. A fifth one, depending on the project. So whether it's CKShop, whether it's Magma Helm Disk, whether it's, I don't know, whatever. Uh, it's, it's not really an extension. What I mentioned behind the question mark, it's, it's an external service. Uh, but I really do like it. It's myjoomla.com. Uh, I use it for to monitor all my sites, to scan them, to even update them um, when I tested it in the staging. So <coughs> it's actually my top four and yeah, top five. Uh, we got about 10 minutes left <coughs> for questions. I have to extend my presentation. It seems. <laughs> um, so, if you if you have any questions, just shoot now. Oh, that's easy. <laughs> no what? What's your top ten extension? Uh, <laughs> can I duplicate the list and then? <laughs> uh, how do you test your website after the update? What tools do you use to do that? Sorry. How do you test your website after the update to check if nothing got broken? Okay. So what I do first, depending because that might change today because I heard it's a really neat extension. I have a demo later on. But what I do first normally is take a backup, install that either on localhost or on my testing server, depending. I push the updates, whether it's Joomla core then I, I'll check afterwards if it, everything is functioning good. If it's an extension, especially extension update, I just go into an extension, see if the workflow is still working, whether the front end is still working, whether they did any changes, and I try to notify my client as well, like, look, this has changed, whether it's an interface. For example, uh, Aki mailing, if you go back two <coughs> versions, they completely redesigned their interface. It was a big change. And honestly, I, I like it. Uh, even my clients now, the first time they saw it, I was like, oh, what's this? <laughs> but now it's, yeah, it works pretty fine. So I notify my clients as well. And then when I tested everything, I know, actually I, I know all the workflows of my clients because I've, because I've set them up together with them. So I just put in one test case, for example, with the help desk, I just put in one test case and see, okay, is it still working? Okay, fine. Then I'll push it through the live site and notify my client like, okay, look, updates are done. Uh, this has changed. Be careful with that and, and stuff like that. I'm just thinking if you've got a lot of different extensions on one site, if you update them all in one go. No. So yeah, can, <laughs> no. that's what I'm saying, yeah. <laughs> so you kind of need to do one, test the whole site, update the other, test the whole site, update the other. And if you've got like nine or ten extensions, it can become really time consuming. Yeah. And that's my problem with how on earth do I offer that to my customers? I could I could spend a flipping day doing that. Yeah. Or two days. And then something's broken and then I've got to fix the layout and mm. I've got to rebuild, especially virtue mark. Uh, <laughs> You know, <laughs> just, got, just got some shivers. Yeah. I don't know. Um, yeah. Okay. Th that's first, fair. first of all, um, my question to you would be: Why so many extensions? Try mm. to 
keep yeah. the amount of extensions to a minimum. Yeah, yeah. Because if it's sometimes okay, you might need a bit more extensions than usual, but there's a lot you can do with Joomla Core. I, I've, one, I've got a, a client, she's on Joomla, she's got Virtumart, and then she wants an extension to do invoices a specific way. She's got another extension to do bonus um, prices, so she can do, if you buy two, you get this free, or, you know, 5% off. And she's got another couple, and she wants them for very specific things, and just the thought of upgrading that is, you know, it's, it's going to be, it's going to cost her quite a lot of money, and, um, she, you know, she's, she's not a big site, she, she just makes... Um, leather, yeah. leather objects homemade, homemade for products, and, so and, yeah. and, okay. and pets and things. So yeah, yeah, she's not, she's not a big company. And yeah, that's that's a hard one um, because, well, I, I don't know for for everybody, but I always try to find the right way in between what people can spend and what mm. I can deliver as a side builder. Yeah. Um, and it helped me out sometimes with, with clients, but I lost other clients as well because of that, but it doesn't matter. It's, it's really hard, um, especially, did you build the website yourself or did you? I did, I did it but it was quite a long time ago, so it's quite old now. Um, and I have warned her, you know, she's still on 2.5. Um, you know, I've, I've said, I've tried to sort of eke it in gently that she need, she'll need to upgrade. Mm -hmm. um, but as I say, she just doesn't earn a huge amount of money, so it's, yep. it's going to be... Okay. I'm, I'm easing her in gently into the... Uh, yeah, okay, so let's see, you get Virtumart to update. Sorry? You got Virtumart yep. to yep. update, and you got two or three extensions, yeah. which are actually plugins from Virtumart to yeah. update. Yeah, yeah, and we've had quite a bit of trouble with bonus products as well, that's been quite... Okay, buggy. so the easiest thing um, where you lose the less amount of time is just to send a or you know, for, you know, let's start with the three extensions <laughs> <laughs> you just mail them and ask like look is your product 100% compatible with the latest version Virtumart yeah. to get support from Virtumart try yeah. the forum and otherwise good luck <laughs> um, but just ask them mm. and if they say like well their known issues or just go into their support channel whether it's a forum whether it's a ticket system whether it's a knowledge base and also look over there whether there are known issues with updating or not and if, if you already do that it, it takes about half an hour maybe for the three extensions together but it could save you hours and hours of restoring afterwards yeah if you did mess up a little bit or if the extension messed up uh, something so don't just jump in try <laughs> to see like okay this is needed this is needed and then <coughs> contact the extension developer <coughs> and can i say it's about managing customer your relationship yeah. with the customer yes. you said a couple of conflicting things you said she's only a little business making leather trinkets but she's got this shop with extensions for this. And yeah. So yeah. she can't have it both ways. And you're stuck in the middle, yeah. fielding her problem. She wants to be big with the extensions, but she wants to be small and not pay well, you much. Well, she doesn't want to be I big presume. with extensions. She wants to lessen her own she time doing admin and things. And she's putting that on to you. Yeah. So you need uh, This is yeah, the bit that's that's gigs don't do. You've got to yeah. talk to your customer. Yeah. Too. Very good point. So also, if you're using something like Virtumart, you can have like lots of different types of extensions. So some of which you know is you're going to press update, and it's going to go yeah. to the airbnb tick, whatever. Yeah. And some of them you just know is when the when the site up, the core upgrade comes up, there's going to be like a couple of months before the user gets back. Yes. Yeah. And then so you sort of dread that sort of moment. <laughs> yeah. So that you might say, oh, it's time to cut my losses with this sort of problem extension, which is giving me a headache, depending on how big the shop. Yeah, I mean, I haven't sold Virtue Mart for, you, for a few years now, for quite a while, because I've just found it just too problematic. Yeah, well, yeah. I have my issues with Virtue Mart. <laughs> <laughs> uh, according to your experience, uh, how do you manage uh, all the, the websites you have? For you, for you and your clients, uh -huh. uh, when you have updates, uh, so uh, what, how do you do? So, I use my Joomla 
to monitor all my websites. Um, how do I manage them? I have several kinds of maintenance contracts. When the sites are just core, mm -hmm. I just take one basic install, push it and see whether it's okay. Then I push the updates through to my Joomla, for just for core installations. When they have extensions installed on it, and I'm talking about smaller extensions, very narrowed down uh, cliche extensions, for example, then I take a backup, test it, see it on, on localhost or I'm testing the uh, server, whether it works. Then I push the extensions. If they use auto updater, I also use my Joomla for it. If not, download, check, upload. So. Yeah. Um, but it, it really depends on my maintenance contracts. I don't have just one maintenance contract uh, for each client. It, it really depends on how big the site is. Um, do they want extra services like web mastering or mm -hmm. um, changing the images and uh, stuff like that, or uh, template design changes, uh, stuff like that. So it's, it's not just one workflow I have. I have and yeah. several workflows uh, depending on, on the project. So, but I usually always test upfront, except for the core. It's I do one big test and then push everything. It's let me go back to this one. If you do this, yeah. mm. it will simplify your updating life a lot. Oh. If you don't do this, <laughs> nightmare. Yeah, nightmare, pretty much. So if you if you tweak something, whether it's a J layout, whether it's an overwrite, always do it by the rules. You can you can find everything about overwrites, about J layouts and, and stuff like that into the documentation docs.joomla.org. Read it. Sometimes you have to cry maybe, but <laughs> read it again. <laughs> and test it out on, on your um, development server, on your test server, on your local host, I don't care. But do it by the rules. When you don't do it, it's a nightmare. You're pretty much screwed bad. So. Um, but if, if you do it by the rules, updating will actually be, won't be a pain in the ass. So. What happens when you can't? Then Whatever don't do it. Change. Then don't do it. The client wants this no. change. You talk change talk to your client. Extension. Talk to your client and see that it, you can find another way to compromise for both parties. Like, okay, I can do this, but I can't do that. What about the middle way, but keep following the rules so you don't have to hack into the core? I actually turned down two projects last year because of that. So one project actually got started and then he came along and it's like, I want to change the scope. Actually, he just said to me, I want this. I said, okay, so it's a scope change, but I have to look into it because what you're asking is very specific and it's very strange workflow. And it didn't matter. It, it didn't work out without hacking into the core and without hacking into the core of the extension I used. So it's like, okay, now what? It's either you change your workflow, or either I say, this is it. I'm not working on the project anymore. Turn out a second. But yeah. It happens. And then he went to somebody else who did the same thing, and port and hacked the port. Yes, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> and I, know that. I get all those sites after. I get all the sites with them. Yeah. Oh, somebody did that. Oh, yeah, he hacked your port. Yeah. Okay, now I need to fix it. If you, if, you, if you got a site like that, my first response mostly is like, oh, look, you're not on the latest version. Let's migrate and rebuild the whole site. Exactly. <laughs> By the rules. Yeah. Not everybody is too happy about that. No. Uh, but <laughs> it happens. Um, and especially what's the other possible problem with, with such sites is as well, is that the old administrator or the old maintainer, maintainer still got access. Whether it's FTP, uh, whether it's MySQL. And I'll go and do it anyway. Sorry? <laughs> and I'll just FTP and go and do it anyway. <laughs> 
That's the problem. So I got I got a client from Sweden and I did some changes on a Sika shop. And they're nearly finished. And all of a sudden the dot HD access was rewritten by an old administrator from him. The site went oh. down completely. <laughs> he came to blame me. Yeah, yeah I thought that happened mm. to me last week. Yeah. It's like I, what's going on? <laughs> Actually I'm on vacation. I'm not working on your site. So and then I, I checked the logs and I saw the HD access was rewritten. So I yeah. rewrote it again in the correct way and the site was back up and we finished up the Hika shop. Uh, so it's okay. I saw some question, yeah. Yeah, that's topic a little bit, various discussions about um, the online shops and things. And what's, that's like, well, the old SOS Converse store for the car club that I run. Um, that's obviously need to, to update that at some point. Mm -hmm. um, well, there, there are <laughs> yeah. Well, we there are several uh, e-commerce solutions for Joomla. It depends on what you need. Um, you say it's running at OS Commerce right now. It's running OS Commerce at the moment. Um, it goes back to what you were saying about modifying the, the underlying code and things. I had to. Mm -hmm. quite a bit of that to actually make it work for a UK shop with all that postage. No. Okay. So I don't really want to get into doing all that again. Yeah, as far as I know, none of the existing e-commerce extensions for Joomla support direct <coughs> import from OS Commerce, but I could be mistaken. Yeah, I'm not, I'm so not too bothered about migrating that. I'll just take the stuff out of the database and then import it and then people will just have to register. So you don't you don't want to migrate the orders, yeah, the historical of the orders? No? Okay, so you're starting from scratch, actually. Okay, well, that's pretty easy. Just sit down, take a piece of paper, or type it on your computer, depending, and see what you want. Which, what feature sets do you want? You want just, and how many products do you have? Is it 10 products? Is it 100? Is it 1,000? Is it 10,000 of products? Is also depending. You need to link the products. Like, if you buy this article, you might be interested in this. And do you need to link them manually, or can you do it by import? So all those questions you actually have to put down first for on, on paper or on email. What I did with, with my latest shop project, which is going to be launched pretty soon, is I just all the questions. I just wrote them down put them in an email and send them to all the extension developers I know who are able to deliver eShop or e-commerce solutions. And none all of them answered, especially one German e-commerce <laughs> solution. Um, but all the rest answered and I got, I got listed them next to each other and that's how I picked my, my, uh, my, my extension. So it's, it's about communicating, it's, it's Really, there, there's a lot of factors because if someone comes to me and says, like, look, I just need an e-commerce solution or I need an e-shop, okay, and what do you need? What do you mean, what do you need? I just want to sell online. No, okay, you got your products, but how are you going to import them? Do you want them automatically synchronized with your program you're using in your store right now? How is um, how do you want to set up your logistics? Mm -hmm. Okay, so and I think David is okay. going to kick us out. The quick one then, right back to the very beginning. How do you choose an extension? Yeah, you've just said you come up with your list of requirements, yeah. email it, and the response, the non-responsive ones get kicked off. You come up with a very short list. Do we trust the star rating? Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's a quick question, probably a longer answer. <laughs> the star rating on the extension okay. directory. Mm -hmm. yeah. And how does, how does Jeremy says it, uh, a Top Gear, and with that bang we're going out? <laughs> 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 okay. No. Um, yeah, I have. I've seen yes I've and no. Um, the problem is, 
because I'm, I'm, I'm so long already in the community and, and, and seen a lot of presentations and, and stuff like that, I'm pretty focused on some extensions and I know the star ratings or the ratings and the new jets aren't always accurate. So they're working on bits. I got in touch with eShop about a week ago because I wanted some questions before I bought the product for the customer. Pre-sales, asked the questions, and it's like three, four days later, no response. I sent another response. Is there anybody there to answer these questions? Nothing. But it's got fi five or four and a half stars on the JD, and I'm thinking, but it's perfect for what my customers want. So. Yeah. I, have you, have you tried a direct ping on Twitter or that's good Facebook? Idea. Yeah. Just like, hey guys, I asked you a question. Could you get back to me? Brilliant idea. Not Brilliant. not like, hey guys, uh, why are not you why are you not answering me? Just be gentle. Yeah. I I asked you a question. Could you get back to me? Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.